<laughs> as soon as I hit the live button, the dogs start barking. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> The male person like literally just pulled up. So I apologize for the barking because you're probably going to hear a little bit more. Albert, stop that. <laughs> but hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. It's Tuesday, my friends. And we are into another week already. Like, I don't know what's happening to the month of October, but it is like flying by, is going by so quickly. And I can't really decide if that is a good thing or a bad thing, because that means that Christmas is just like coming at us full speed ahead. It's it's just crazy. Do you ever feel that way? Like the end of the year just kind of comes on really quickly. You know, summertime tends to drag and go really slow. But then like as soon as fall hits, it's like, boom, Christmas is here. <laughs> I don't know if you're feeling it, but that's what I'm feeling. Much love to you all. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Subi. Su Subi. Susie. Sharon. Peggy. Rosanna. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. It's so good to see you. Everybody on YouTube, hello to you, my friends. Gloria, how are you? So good to see you guys. I hope everybody is having a great week so far. You know, I'm kind of glad we don't meet on Mondays because I'm just not much of a Monday person. Um, and I don't, you know, on one hand, it's like, well, maybe that would be a good way to start our week. But on the other hand, like, I just want to get my Mondays over with so that we can enjoy the rest of the week. I feel that way too. All right. So we've got a fun show. We've got a fun show. At least I hope so. <laughs> you never know how things are going to go when you design on the fly. It's possible this could just go off the rails and be a hot mess, but the consolation to that is at least we're in it together, right? I do have a plan. I do plan ahead a little bit. So I do have a plan, but for the most part, I have not executed the plan. So we are going to do this all together. Now, what are we doing? Like I said, we're going to um, design on the fly and we're going to be using, hey, stop with the squeaky toy, please. Goodness, we are going to be designing with the latest bargain bead box monthly box. Cooper. <laughs> it's like having a three year old with fur. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Right. And we're, we're going to go through the bargain bead box and take a look at it because somebody had asked if I would actually do it like an actual unboxing. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, but I am going to show you every single thing that came in this past bargain bead box. You guys, uh, for you who are unfamiliar with bargain bead box, this is a monthly shipment that is like a, it's a curated box of goodies that comes to you. It is less than $20. And I think it's a great way to build up your stash. If you taking the ball away, <laughs> if you he just brought it closer to me, like, you know, no, if you are looking into subscription services, there are a lot of really good ones. Um, Sam Speedbox is on the top of my, my list, um, as far as value and quality is concerned. And then a close second is bargain bead box. Now bargain bead box, of course, is on like, is in a completely different price category. Um, but for those of you who like to watch your pennies and maybe don't want to spend a whole lot, this is a fun one. And I've never been disappointed in a box. The only time I can say that I wasn't like wowed was when it was in a color palette that wasn't a color palette that I personally like. Does that mean that they failed? Of course not. That just means that everybody has different taste. But what I love about the bargain bead box is there is a cohesive thing, right? It's it's a cohesive color palette. They include charms and findings and metal components to go with it. And that I just love that because it's like somebody's doing all the hard work for me, right? I love that. So that's what we are going to be working with today. And like I said, it's under $20. And if you will go to bargain bead box and use the code, let's see, Joan put it up here. The code is SED2. When you go to check out, um, I get a little, I got a little something, something <laughs> from them. It is a very small commission and you don't have to use it, but know that um, 
when you make a purchase from them and you use that code that I do get a little bit back and um, it just kind of strengthens the relationship that I have with the bargain bead box people. Guys, they're awesome. They really, really are. Their customer service is top notch. It is a small business. So it's not big business. This is not a big corporation. Not that that makes any difference, but these people are really doing their best uh, to go above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to running a business. And uh, I think you will be pleasantly surprised if you've never participated in the bargain meat box. One of the other bonuses, and then we'll get right down to it, is um, when you subscribe to bargain meat box, you are then allowed access to their sister site, which is the same company, but it's called bead box bargains, where you can repurchase the things that are in your bargain bead box, but then they have a whole other selection of things that you can purchase. And it feels very much like a wholesale price. It's kind of like if you don't have a wholesale license and you're just buying for yourself and you're stocking up, um, it feels like you're shopping with that wholesale discount because their prices are so good. Um, their selection is always changing and they add new things every single day. So uh, definitely a company that I stand behind and uh, appreciate very, very much in the industry. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing. And of course, I'm going to be using lots of beetle on with this because, you know, uh, I can't not. <laughs> Let me some beetle on. Um, what else? Oh, one other thing I want to mention, and then I promise we will get we'll get to work with all all of the things. Um, I noticed that Facebook has kind of changed its setup for events. I, I, I don't know why Facebook decides that they need to change things that are not broken, but for whatever reason, they um, have updated things. And now, when you go to make an event, it makes an automatic little chat, right? Like in the messenger. I didn't realize that was going to happen um, and I would have deleted it except that a lot of you had already started chatting there and I didn't want to just like boot you out. Um, but know that I didn't intentionally put together a, <laughs> I didn't intentionally put together a chat group for this live in particular. It's that's just a Facebook default thing and I'm still trying to figure it out. I wish they would stop messing with the settings to be completely honest with you. Okay. So that's it. Let's stop talking and let's get down to business. Okay. You muted it. Maybe that's what I should do too. It's not that I don't want to chat with you guys, but like, that's a lot to keep up with. And I was, I was in the middle of making kits and it was like, whoa, what is happening here? <laughs> What's happening? All right. Just please excuse my dirty bead, bead mat. One of these days I will put it in the washing machine. All right. So I've got bargain bead box for the month of October guys. And I'm going to go through this one really, really quickly, okay? I'm not going to spend a whole, whole lot of time on this, but I do want to kind of show you everything that's in here. We'll start with the beads, and then we'll look at the metal components, and then we're, we're going to design on the fly, okay? And I'm actually going to take most of this out. So, these are some lavender glass beads. Those are really, really pretty. I love a round bead. I'm never going to complain about getting a round bead. Okay. I'm just not because they're so easy to work with. There is some sesame jasper. Remember when we talked about the difference between poppy seed and sesame jasper? Now here's some sesame jasper for you. All right. Definitely a difference from that blue that we worked with last week. There is mookite in this, and you guys know how much I love that. This is just the first of the mookite. So there's a chip strand of mookite. You can see now how the color palette is kind of coming, coming together, because at first you were like purple and red. That doesn't make any sense, but it does. It really, really does. So mookite chips. There is some larger mookite in here. I'm so, I'm so in love with Mookite. I really, just that whole, all of those colors, those are my colors. They really, really are. It's another of the Mookite. <laughs> Cindy says it like I say, yeah, Mookite. Gotta say it that way. A little bit smaller on the Mookite, which, mm, yes, please. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so loving, so loving. All right couple more beady goodness things here. All right. Here's a yellow rondelle. Hi, Pam. Sylvia's watching while at lunch. I haven't done lunch yet. I'm gonna. Look at that yellow. I don't even like yellow. And I'm like, yes, that color palette is giving me life. 
here's some mukai in just a different shape. Wanda says, mmm, chips. Cooper, how long are you going to stand here and, and be sad about me having your ball? He's mad at me, y'all. Look at the facet on those. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're getting to the sparkly because they can't not do sparkly. And that's part of the reason that I love them so much because they always do gemstones, but then they also do sparkle. And I am I'm the sparkle queen. So those are gorgeous. Okay, stop crying. Go away. Take your ball. Okay. Those are awesome. Look how pretty. Two more sparkly things and then the metal. Look at these bicones. cones. Yes, 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 yes. Those are so beautiful. So again, this is not like an official unboxing. I'm not going down the list. I'm just showing you what's in the box so we can make something. And I wanted to take all the beads out because I'm going to be using these. Terry says she's knitting while she watches. These are amazing. Are those not beautiful? I forgot to look to see what these were. 19. Slate Peacock. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can see myself reordering those for sure. Look how pretty. You can't tell me that's not a beautiful color palette. Even if it's not your favorite color palette, you can't tell me that's not a great combo. So, so pretty. So I'm going to slide these over. And then we're going to look at the metal elements here. So there are, oh, I almost forgot. There is one, one last beady goodness here. And that is a mukite wing to go with the mook. Look how pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So brass is the color for all of the components that are going with this. There are these little brass charms with the feathers on them. And see how they go with our little mukite feather. Love, love, love. Okay. Sit those out right there. More feathers. I love the feathers in this one. Super cool. There's a whole little thing of brass feathers. Like they don't skimp. You know what I mean? Like they give you plenty to work with. And that's another thing that I really love about get, getting the bargain bead box. Because I know that I have enough to make several pieces of jewelry. And that's, you know, I love that. It's certainly a good bargain. These are curved, which I love. So yeah, you can definitely use these for earrings or a pendant if you want to, but because they're curved, they lay really, really nicely on your wrist. So they're, they're going to make really cool bracelets and there's two of them. So you could make like a little bracelet stack. Super cute. Love those. Okay. There's one more big leaf. That one's really pretty too. And you can always patina these if you want to, right? You can always like make these custom to you and your design. All right. Some little toggles. Can't go wrong with toggles. I order toggles from Bargain Bead Box on a regular basis. Some of you might know that because they do tend to end up in my kits. Little spacer beads in brass. And there's a bunch. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of beads. Just saying. Just saying. I'm not going to dump all those out. But I am going to keep these close because we're going to use some of them. And then there are some bead caps as well. Probably use some of these too. Love those. Right? So they give you a little bit of everything. That's not the only thing. That's not all. There is some chain involved as well, which I always appreciate. And I have a tendency to use the chain almost every single time I make a bargain bead box design because it's specifically matched. Like they go out of their way. Cause you know how sometimes the metals are hard to match with each other. You've got brass, but you end up with your chain being on the yellow side or your chain is more on the pink side, you know, but they like, they're really meticulous about making sure that all of the metal elements are the same warmth you know what i'm saying or the same coolness depending on what it is and i appreciate that because that's one of the things that i kind of struggle with when i'm digging through my own stash trying to make my mat my metals work with each other you know okay so that is what we've got as far as what we've got to work with that's a lot y'all right look at all the beads and then all of the metal that's a lot for 
less than twenty dollars. Like you can't you, you can't really complain about that. Plus the fact that you know there are gemstones involved here. All right, so I'm gonna move all of these over onto the little bag. And I'm going to scoot my metal stuff out of the way as well. In fact, I'm going to put all my metal stuff on a little, a little saucer so I can still get to it all. I don't know how you guys work, but I have lots of plates and bowls. <laughs> like you would think this was a kitchen. It's totally not, but plates and bowls are so handy. Okay. Now, as far as the beetle on stuff that I'm going to be using... Like I said, it's a design on the fly, but I do have a plan. Okay. I do have a plan and my plan includes b -Lon. And for you, those of you who are not familiar with b -Lon, you can get b on the um, beetle on website. It comes in a couple of different three packs where there are different colors. This one I got from a three pack that had uh, copper and gold in it. And I thought these were perfect colors to use with the color palette that we've got. So it's basically just nylon cord. Um, it does have kind of a grippy coating over the outside of it. So it's nice. And the knots that you make with it, uh, they stay knotted, which I really, really appreciate for sure. So I'm going to do a multi-strand necklace in the front, I think. Um, that's at least that's what the plan is. Okay. I am going to make several strands of this. We're going to do some simple knotting. I'm going to put on the ends. Now remember, this is going to be just in the front. I'm going to use these. I hope they're going to be big enough to take, to cover up my knots, but we'll find out. <laughs> I grabbed some 22 gauge German style wire in gold. I also grabbed some gold color bead stringing wire in 19 strand. So I'm, I'm sticking with the whole color combination here. I'm not going rogue and going with silver. Okay. But what I want to start with is because I want to do a multi-strand design, I need several, several pieces of the Belon. And I think I'm going to do this in groups of, I think I'm going to do it in groups of three and I want three strands. So I'm going to need nine pieces. <laughs> Math is hard, y'all. I'm going to need nine pieces of the Belon and I haven't measured it out yet, but I want plenty of this to work with. So I'm going to do, I don't even know. Um, I'm going to go with about three feet of this because I know that's, I know that's going to be too much, but I am going to be creating knots and I want to be sure that I have plenty to knot with. So there's some, I could have pre-cut this, I suppose, not made you sit through this part, but you know, it just goes to show that this truly is design on the fly and who knows what's actually going to happen. I do love the Belon though. This stuff is great for, um, for knotting. It's great for macrame. It's good for just simple stringing. It's, you know, sometimes you just want a cord instead of a bead stringing wire. And I can't, I can't talk enough about how much I like the Belon. and you can get it in neutrals, which is really nice. You can get it in the gray, black, and white, the gold, copper, and a silver. I can't remember what the other one is. I know that there's, there's got to be at least one more. Okay, let's see here. We've got, we've got six so far. We're going to end up with more than we need, I think, but that's all right. So just making some long strands of this. Galactica Galleria. I love that. That rolls off the tongue so nicely. It says, do you have inspirational pictures um, to help you decide what to make? Sometimes really just kind of depends. Um, a lot of times I, I keep my old designs. Um, I have pictures of every design that I've ever done for Beetle On, every design I've ever done for JTV or for myself. And a lot of times I'll flip through those old pictures and I'll look at things and I'll be like, you know what, I can redo that now. Like I can do the updated version of that because I've been doing this a long time. So I have a huge, I have a huge library of things that I've made and 
a lot of times it's nice to go back and look at those things and just kind of update them, right? All right, so let's take a look. I think I cut more than I needed. What I'm going for is nine pieces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I, I feel like I have a ninth piece in here somewhere. It's just high. Oh, it's in the floor. Okay. Now I realize this is a mess. Like nine strands of this is a lot to mess with at first. But we're going to make this a little bit cleaner here in just a second. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Too many. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to tie these into a knot, but I want to tie these into a knot onto something that I can then pull into this cone. And I'm really crossing my fingers that my cone is big enough because it's possible that it's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use like a, this is sort of a tassel method, but we're not really making a tassel, right? We're making a multi-strand design. So I've got some 22 gauge wire here and Got the ends of all my pieces here and I'm going to just come to the end sort of I'm a little way away from the end here I'm going to take my wire fold that in half right not at the not at the middle down here towards the end and then I'm just going to take these wires and I'm going to make like a messy wrapped loop here because this is all going to go inside that cone. You're never going to see any of it. Okay. So I'm just, Albert, stop that. Okay. So just bundling those together again, doesn't really matter what it looks like. Okay. Now, I want to tie an actual knot because I don't want the this to I don't want these to slip off. So take my cords and I'm just going to tie an overhanded knot with all of them. Okay. And I'm going to kind of tie that over what we just did with our wire. Because again, you're not going to see any of this. Now, okay, I realize there are a lot of different ways to achieve these exact same results, okay? So don't come at me and be like, there's an easier way. I, I realize. But sometimes it's, you know, it's cool to see different ways to do things. All right, so I've tied a knot in all of those, okay? Now what I want to do is I got to cut all this off because I don't need all of this extra fringe. Ruth said, thanks for the length. I hope I, I, I like three feet. <laughs> I hope you're not being like sarcastic because this is design on the fly. <laughs> Please don't be mad at me, Ruth Ann. I love you. All right. <laughs> With design on the fly, I don't, I don't have a lot of links. I'm sorry. Um, as far as the wire is concerned, it's like not a lot. Like, you know, four inches is all you're really going to need. <laughs> don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I trimmed all those off. Now, again, the B-Lon has a nice grippy coating on it, but just because of the grippy coating doesn't mean that I don't feel like I need a little extra help. So I'm going to use some hypo cement. Hi, Cheryl. I'm going to put a little bit of hypo cement on this just around the knot and around where I cut off. Just you know, I'm going to stick it down in there, like stick the, that little tip down in there. Okay. I mean, I'm not doing like a ton, but I, I just want the extra insurance. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this into the cone and I'm going to cross my fingers. Slide that in to the cone 
Yes. Oh, whew, I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little worried. All right. So that fits. You can still see the bottom of the knot, but you know what? I'm not mad at it. it at least the messy of this is covered. Okay. So now I'm going to do a wrapped loop here on the end and bending the wire. Okay. Coming in with my round nose pliers. I'm going up and over, rotate the pliers so I can take the wire over to the other side. And then I'm going to wire wrap in that space between the loop. Is there Facebook issues today, you guys? I hate, I hate it when there are Facebook issues. I'm going to wrap, I'm going to actually kind of wrap over the wraps that I already made just to use up the rest of this wire. It also kind of helps to balance the wire wrap with the end of the cone. Right. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off what I don't need. Okay. Laurel says she really likes that way to connect it. I'm glad it worked out. Um, you know, it's uh, the cone is where it's at because you hide all of that messiness. You don't have to use a cone, but I just didn't want to see that knot. You know what I mean? Okay, so now what I have here is a ton of strands of the B-Lawn. And I want to separate these out into groups of three. So there's a group of three. Here's... I counted wrong. <laughs> you guys. Oh, no, I didn't count wrong. One of them didn't get tied in. That's okay. We don't care. We don't care. We're going to keep going. It fell out as I was. <laughs> oh, gosh. That is so my luck. But I don't really care one way or another because we're still going to do a three strand design and it doesn't make any make that much of a difference. OK, so I've got three sections here. Now, if you wanted to, you could braid these together and make yourself a little knotted something or another. But we're going to add beads to ours, but we're going to make three strands. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take these three strands. We're going to do one at a time. So the rest of these, I'm just going to kind of bundle out of the way. OK. And we're just gonna do simple knots here and we are gonna incorporate all of this beady goodness. So I'm gonna trim these and make ourselves some little piles of wonderful beads. Okay. Albert, mind your manners, please. There are people here today. <laughs> All right, so we're setting the beads free so that we can use them. And I really have no rhyme or reason with the beads, right? And that's part of the fun is that we're just going to kind of mix it up and mix all of these beads together, which is why it's great that it's already a great color palette, right? We don't have to do any extra thinking about grabbing beads, we just dump out what we've got. Okay, I know it's a mess, but bear with me, okay? We're gonna make it make sense. All right, so with our first strand, we have three strands of our B-Lawn. We're gonna take our strands individually and I'm gonna put a bead or a couple of beads or whatever you want to onto the B-Lawn. So with this one, the strand, I'm gonna take a couple of these little Mookite baby beads. Drop those down on this strand. I'm just going to put one of the purple. Okay. On the other strand, let's put a little sparkle on this one. Put a couple of these little bicones. Okay. All right. So I got beads on all three of the strands. I'm going to bring them all together. To make a little bundle, right? And they're all movable. So I'm not going to tie these tight. Okay. I'm going to tie an overhanded knot. Move that down here. I want there to be nice space. In there. <laughs> Sorry, scared me. I want there to be a nice amount of space there, but not a ton, right? Okay. 
So now we're just gonna repeat that. We're just gonna add more beads. This is how we're gonna make the three strands. So a lot of this is just gonna be more repetition of this, but I'm gonna, of course, mix up my bead choices here, right? Cause I got a lot of beads to work with and this is gonna be a great way to show off all of those beads. So just pick up your strands, right? Add your beads as you want. And you can mix them up. Can even do some of these chips. Let's do some chip beads in here too, because the chips are fun. The only problem with the chips is that sometimes they are drilled too small for um, Belon. Um, but these seem to have really good holes on them so far. So good, right? Okay. I'm going to drop all that down. Kind of bundle all of those together, right? Another overhanded knot. Again, just kind of look in to see what kind of spacing I've got before I cinch down my knot. Okay. Another little grouping. Now, what you need to decide as you're working is you want to decide how long you want your strands to be, okay? And not only that, but since you're doing three strands, do you want all three strands to be the same length so that they are all clustered together or do you want them to be tiered, right? You got to take all of that into consideration as you are working. And you don't have to make your final decision until we're ready to secure the other end of this. Um, but it is a good thing to be thinking about if you are designing on the fly like I am and haven't really planned ahead. Um, just, just some little food for thought as you're, Working. Okay, there's another little bundle. Okay, cinch that knot down. And you can see this works out pretty quickly. Um, though it is a little time consuming because we're doing three strands, it doesn't go by quickly, but it also doesn't take forever to. Um, to make three whole strands. You know, if you were doing wire wrapping, if you were making like a rosary chain of wire wrapped beads, it would, it would take a little bit longer than this. That's for sure. Add some sparkle. Add I think this is going to turn out really pretty. You get to bundle all of those beautiful colors together. It's a great way to use that bead soup too, you know, if you've got bead soup and don't really have even numbers of things. Or odd, you know what I mean? You don't have enough of something to make like one bracelet out of all of them. Okay. I think so too. Renee says this is going to be so cool. I hope it is. I think it's going to be really beautiful. You can't go wrong with the colors. I mean, right? If I had to choose these colors myself, I probably wouldn't have done such a good job. So <laughs> the hard work's done for me. Okay. Let's do some more chips. I like chip beads. Um, a lot of times I struggle with what to do with chip beads, but you can do m these multi-stranded designs just like I'm doing right now with nothing but chips. So if you've got a ton of chip beads and you don't really know what to do with them, this is a great way to use up chip beads that maybe you had left over from a previous project or you just have a bunch and don't really know, you know, what to do happens. All right. Another little bundle of goodies. Look 
how pretty. And we're already working up some great links here. Melissa, so good to see you. I do too. Susan says she loves the mix of colors this month. I do too. Really, really beautiful. <clears throat> Albert, stop it. My goodness. People can hear you. <laughs> oh, to have dogs. I love it because a lot of our community are animal lovers. So you guys are very forgiving. <laughs> it's okay that your dogs are loud and grunty and. <laughs> mm, what to put on next? More sparkle. Can never go wrong with sparkle. Hopefully this design turns out really, really well. If it does, I'll put it in the shop. You guys have been buying my designs like crazy. So my shop has got plenty of kits and plenty of maker mixes, but finished pieces, I'm running, I'm running short on finished pieces, which is not a bad thing. I'm not complaining. Don't, don't take that the wrong way. Just want to be sure that I've got enough. Cause sometimes, you know, you just, people just want to buy finished pieces cause they make great gifts. So All right, so I think we're going to do maybe three more bundles on this strand, and then we're going to move to the next strand, okay? And we'll move down. <laughs> Terry says, <laughs> we love Albert and Cooper. Um, she has bull mastiffs, and they really make lots of snorting noise. Snorting noise. Wow, that's hard to say. Snorting noises. <laughs> So it sounds like home to her. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Sometimes it's really embarrassing, though. I'm like, oh, gosh, Albert, please. He is such a snorty dog. He really, really is. To be such a beautiful golden retriever, he is just like, I'm like, where are your manners? It's pretty funny. Ah, oh, Jenna. Jenna Banana. Okay, let's see getting pretty good pretty good little length here let's do two more bundles real quick and then we'll move on okay so i'm gonna grab some more chips i'm really loving these chips a whole necklace in the chips i think would be amazing and my belon we have this conversation every single time that i use belon um but my belon is starting to kind of fray at the ends uh, this, of course, being a design on the fly, and I didn't really know how many beads I was going to be using and how much length of it I needed. I didn't prepare in advance, but you can. You can put uh, clear nail polish on the ends of your belon to stiffen it up to make it more like a needle at the end. You can put um, super glue, anything like that to harden up the end, and it makes it a little bit easier to go into the beads and it won't fray. Um, but that's just if you have, you know, time to pre prepare. Didn't really know how much I was going to need. Okay. That's our last little bundle. Not, a, not our last little bundle. We've got one more bundle. And then I'm going to move to the next. Okay. Let's, let's get our ruler out, though, and measure. Let's see how much. Catherine, I do see your comments. <laughs> I do. I do see Facebook comments when they go by. So that's, that's eight inches. That's eight inches of beads. I tell you what, let's just move on. Let's leave this one just like it is. Okay. I don't want it to get too long. That's a good little drape. I can always add another one if I need to at the end. So let's move on. Okay. So I'm going to take another group and listen, I'm leaving the end. Okay. I'm not ready to cut any of this off. So if you're going to recreate this, don't, 
don't cut off just leave what's left okay i'm going to take another group of three okay and let's see for this one we made one two three four five six seven eight little bundles let's do let's do nine bundles on this one and then the the last one i think i actually want to make it shorter since it's only two strands okay all right oh we have a mad face i just saw it i don't know who who made the mad face but we're giving you a big hug don't be grumpy there's no grumpiness in jewelry making All right. Yes, yes, Jana, using October's bargain bead box. So pretty. So, so pretty. Probably an accident. Well, even if it wasn't, that's okay. We still love them, right? We're giving them lots of love and hugs. Because you never know. You never know what somebody's going through and you never know what one little thing that gets said might set somebody off, you know, just a little trigger. Should they be taking it out on us here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live? No, they shouldn't. But you know what? We give everybody grace. It's all good. Unless I did something offensive and then I'm sorry. <laughs> you never know with me. <laughs> one can never be certain. Um, I'm oftentimes surprised at the things that come out of my mouth. So <laughs> I love Moo Kite too, Suzanne. It's so beautiful and it's so perfect for fall. But really, I can't find a reason not to wear Moo Kite, like even if it's springtime and summer. But part of that is because the Moo Kite really kind of lends itself to just like what this little bead palette, this color palette has going for it. And that is that it has the tones of purple and the yellow. So it really can, um, you can really get away with wearing it all year because those are colors that you're going to see. Is Beelon thread exclusive only to Beelon? Yes, Deborah, it is. But um, there are other there are other companies that have similar product. Um, the similar products, though, I will say this. The one difference about the Beelon as opposed to Eslon and Ceylon, which are from other companies, is that, um, at least in my experience, now I'm not, I, I can't, this is really just kind of a generalization based on my experience. Um, they don't have that same grippy coating, right? They, they um, are very slippery. And that's the one a uh, big difference, at least when it comes to the way that I use it, um, that I appreciate so much with the Beelon is that it has that grippy kind of, it's almost like it has like a waxy coating on the outside of it. That texture makes it really, really easy to work with. And particularly if you're going to do like macrame, it makes it, um, makes the knots really, really secure. Can you put through, can you put all strands through one bead too? You can if you're, if the bead hole will fit, right? If the bead hole is large enough, you can, you can do, you can put all those strands through there. It'll take a pretty large hole. But I got to tell you, these Mukite beads that are included in this uh, bargain bead box, look at the hole on those. I love that because a lot of times when you get gemstone beads, the holes are so tiny, like you have to get your bead reamer out and, you know, only certain things will fit through it. And I got to say, that's one thing about, not one thing about, but that's a good thing about these is that the hole is really, really good. Now that chip, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Do you see why chips are like that though? See how thin that where it got drilled do you see that little thin i don't trust that so i'm just going to put this one to the side pick another one. Oh, i put chips in the last let's let's do different this time <laughs> oh no cheryl got caught Cheryl says, oh no, I have to go back to work. I got caught. 
No good. That's no good. Just ordered a bead reamer. I love having a bead reamer around. If you don't have one, they're definitely handy for so many things. Are you going to get the attachments, Karen, for the wire rounder tips that go with it? I love that too. That's really, really handy to have. Yes, Loretta, this is a necklace. I'll show you because um, I'm sure you're not the only one who's tuning in late. I'll show you what we've done so far. Just take a little, take a little quick break. So I have bundled several strands of Belon and we used some wire to connect them and pulled that knot into a cone. And we're making a multi-strand design with Belon and clusters of this beautiful bead palette. So you haven't missed a whole lot. Just getting started. If you want to, if you want to see how I did get started, you'll have to watch the replay. But it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Nothing too difficult. Okay. <laughs> Deb says I bought one. And lost it before I got to you. That's the one thing about them is that they're so tiny. They're so, so tiny. You got to find like a, a place to store them that you don't forget about. That's my biggest problem. So I end up hiding things from myself. Nina says, how do I order? Um, so Nina, the beads that I'm using here are from the Bargain Bead Box. And you can go to the Bargain Bead Box website. Um, and this was their monthly box for October, but you can sign up for the next box. Um, boxes for the Bargain Bead Box, they tend to ship around um, between the 10th and the 15th, so you usually get them around the 15th. Most everybody gets them around the 15th, I think, um, unless there's some reason, something that's happened. Um, but yeah, and you can use the code SED2 I do get a little small commission from all of the sales, but you don't have to use that if you don't want to. Um, but it is there if you would like. The knotting tool that I use, Cindy, you can get that from Beadalon. Um, I think they're actually out of stock at the moment, um, but it will be restocked really soon. I think the um, I think the Wyatt White Signature one you can still get on the website, but I think just the regular one is out of stock. I'll have to double check and I'll let you know for sure. I know that in the time being, you can order them on Amazon, I believe. All right, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do two more bundles and then we're going to move on to the last strand of this or the last, well, the last tier, if you will, of this. Then we got to figure out what we're going to do for the links because I really didn't think this all the way through. <laughs> Shocking, I know, right? But that's part of the design on the fly. I didn't really think about what the length was going to be, but I grabbed my bead stringing wire because I knew that I wanted to do some stringing. But I'm not entirely sure what I want it to look like. And we have all these fun metal elements too that we can use if we want. Okay, let's see. What shall we put on this one? More sparkle. Oh, Joan, you rock. Joan is always on the ball. John says, or John says, Joan says, goodness gracious, uh, the knotter tool is back in stock. So you can get it straight from the Beetle on website. Send him a little message and tell him I sent you. <laughs> you don't have to, but I do like it when they know that I sent somebody their way. All right, this is our last bundle for this strand of our necklace. Okay. Use the chain and add some dangles. You are speaking my love language. Dangles, yes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. 
would look really good with suede. Oh yeah. Some suede would look amazing with this because of the colors. And I've got two really pretty shades of some faux suede lace sitting right here. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. I don't know. Can't decide. Okay. This is our last bundle on this one. And we're just going to look, we're going to lay it with the other one to see if there is a definite difference in the length. Because if there's not, we may need to adjust a little bit. Yeah. Excuse you. Oh yeah, that'll make a good, there's about a half inch to an inch between, right? That'll work. Okay, so again, don't cut off the ends, just sit that to the side. We've got one more strand. This one I'm gonna make shorter than the rest of them. So the one that we just made was what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do, let's make six out of this one. And remember, I lost a strand as I was tying the knot. So I only have two strands for this one, which is fine. But that's also part of the reason I want to make this one the shorter out of the three. Um, I don't know. Somehow that just makes sense to me in my brain. So we're just going to go with it. Okay. Oh, again, there's a little, see how I don't trust that. So I'm going to sit this one to the side. That's just kind of the way it is with chips though. You know, you got to be sure that you, you look at all of the chips. It has nothing to do with the quality of the chips or where they came from. That's just kind of how chips happen, you know? Sometimes they get drilled in a funny spot. Thank you, Cindy. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh, Sadie says she made a bracelet with mukite and suede. I love that. Got some really pretty mukite strands maybe i should put those in some kits for this week so you guys seem to be a fan of mukite i could make something some sort of mukite kit what should i make i don't have a ton of the beads but i have enough to make a few a few kits you do bracelets um earrings <laughs> <laughs> CC Rhonda says chips happen. <laughs> I agree. That is very true. Chips happen. They really do. And that's true for all beads, you know. Oh, I love that. Karen says save the odd chips to use in resin or jars like jar pendants. That's fantastic. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember when you were a kid or I don't know, maybe, maybe not when you were a kid, but I can remember going to like, when I was a kid, we went to the science museums, um, around here and at the science museums, they always had, um, like a gift shop, you know, and in the gift shops, a lot of times, they had those pins, like, a, you know, a writing pin, and they had a clear end on them. And they were filled with, like, little gemstones. Or you can get them from Swarovski. I think they still have them on the Swarovski, like, the actual official Swarovski site where you can buy their jewelry. Um they have pins that are filled with Swarovski crystals, but you could do this with you. You could do that same thing with your chips. I just don't know where you would buy the, the pins, but somebody's got to have those, right? Okay, there's our little bundle. So this one with the two strands, the bundles are not quite as big and chunky. That's why I wanted to keep this as the, as the top strand so that it doesn't get overpowered by those bigger, thicker strands. Mineral oil and gemstones, that's brilliant. Let's see, I want some yellow here. Ooh, 
Catherine remembers. Cindy says she got one at a Chinese restaurant. See, <laughs> I'm not totally crazy. <laughs> I just remember getting, getting them at like the Museum of Natural Science and, you know, when I was a kid, but I do know you can still get them. And hey, y'all, you don't have to say the S. Listen, because Swarovski is still very much a company where you can buy their finished jewelry and watches. And that's where those pins. I'm not afraid to say Swarovski. They're still a brand. <laughs> they might come after me, but, you know, I'm like, I'm giving the props. <laughs> I'm telling them that they're wonderful. I know there's so much controversy with all of that. Who can say what? And I'm I'm not I'm not afraid. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm a rebel. What can I say? Oh yeah, Alicia says I bet Fire Mountain Gems would have the pin blanks. One, two, three, four. I literally just counted that and needed to count it again because. Wendy says she misses them. Same, 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 same. Okay, more chips. I'm really loving the chips. Yeah, Joan says they still do the pins on their website. They still do watches. To, well, I mean, they're always going to do watches. I need a new, I need a new watch really badly. My Swarovski watch. I bought one with a white band like years ago, years ago. I've had it forever. And the band is just, I don't know why I thought white would be a good idea. It gets so incredibly dirty so fast. Mine's in really bad shape. Mm, that one's pretty, I don't know. I think there's enough there. Yeah, Connie says sometimes she super glues the ends. I do that too when I have when I have time to prepare. Uh, clear nail polish works as well, which is really handy. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Just one more. Put a little sparkle on this one. Okay, and we are going to bring all this together and make this make sense. Oh, thank you, Patty. You're so kind. Try not to laugh today. <laughs> this is really difficult for me. I had somebody leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos that, um, I mean, I get people, people tell me all the time that I talk too much and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I do. Um, I don't apologize for that anymore. But then now it's moved on to, is everything really that funny? Do you need to laugh at everything? And you know what? I just thought to myself, I could either get really mad at this comment and be offended or I can just embrace it because you know what? I have joy in my heart. And clearly the person who is curious as to why I laugh at everything and giggle all the time must not. Right. And that's sad. So but then I thought, well, maybe I do laugh too much. <laughs> so I'm trying to watch it today. Okay, that strand is way too short. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do, did you see that? So like if I pull this one with the rest of them, look at the spacing, that's not gonna work for me. So I am gonna have to do at least two more bundles on this one. It's just because I use smaller beads and it's only the two strands, which is fine, which is fine. We've got a minute, right? <laughs> Deb says she loves that I laugh all the time. I know. And you know, I'm not going to feel bad about laughing all the time because a lot of you guys know I'm going through a lot of crud right now in my life. And the fact that I can laugh is, um, I consider that a blessing. So is everything so funny that I have to laugh at it? Sure. Why not? Right? Exactly. Mary said, <laughs> <laughs> your laughter makes me happy don't stop melanie says your laugh is who you are exactly exactly i hope that that person 
find something to laugh about. All right, we're getting there. This is actually taking a lot longer than I expected. So for those of you who are sticking it out, I appreciate it because we still haven't even done the links to this necklace and I feel like I'm keeping you guys away from other things. So I'm sorry if I am taking too long today, but you know, sometimes the jewelry just takes a minute. Better than crying, amen to that, indeed. I try not to let those kinds of things get to me, but I would be lying if I said that they don't, you know? That's right. Give yourself grace and be you. Oh my gosh. Speaking of which, I meant to mention this before. While I'm doing this, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to mention it now since I'm just kind of repeating the same things over and over again and I'm not teaching you anything new at the moment. Um, you guys who are part of this Sarah Lovecraft Designs community, the post that is going around about being Sarah Lovecraft week, which I did not do. Somebody else designated the week as Sarah Lovecraft week. And then for everybody who has posted um, the most beautiful things, you know, what I've taught them, like that brought tears to my eyes. I cannot begin to tell you uh, how amazing it was to see that, you know, and to... Just to be, I'm going to put one more on each one of these and I'll show you why here in just a second. Um, it just, it was exactly what I needed and just so absolutely amazing to see everybody's answer to that. All of the things that I've taught you guys. And I got to tell you, out of all the skills, every technique I've ever taught you, the one that means the absolute most to me was the answer that I saw the most. And that was to give yourself grace. And if that is the one thing that I teach you, I consider my job well done. I, you know, I hope I teach you how to make jewelry. I hope that I help you improve your skills. I hope that I help to spark your confidence in selling your jewelry and standing up for your art but I hope that I have taught you how to give yourself grace, how to not sweat the small stuff, how to laugh at your mistakes instead of getting frustrated with them. And from what you guys posted, that's exactly what has happened. And I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm doing a good job with that. So thank you for that. You guys, you have no idea. How much that means to me. Okay, so let me back up off my soapbox here. <laughs> I'm putting beads on the last, okay, I'm putting one more group of beads on each one of these strands and I am not tying them and I'm, I'm going to show you why in just a second, okay. Um, I want you to see the ends. I'll show you. I got one more little, more, three more little things, three strands. Okay, let's do this quick so I can show you. So go ahead and put, if you're going to recreate this design, go ahead and put another group on all of them and don't tie. Okay, leave it open because we want the ends on this side to match the ends on the other side and they will not match each other if... There are a bunch of bulky knots at the end because remember when we started, we started with fresh strands. We didn't start with knots, which we probably should have um, in retrospect, but I, I think this is going to make it all even out. So I'll show you. Oops. Okay, now I've got beads on all of the all of the groups here, right? One, two, three. I don't have them tied in knots yet. I'm gonna bundle them all together. Okay, and hold on to them because over here, remember when we started over here, we didn't start with a bunch of knots. So if I tie knots in all of these, I'm gonna have three knots 
where I don't have three knots over here. I just have the one knot that's up inside the cone. So that's what I'm thinking, right? That's my, that's my thought process here. I don't want it to look different on the other end. Okay, so don't tie knots here yet. We're just gonna tie that one knot and we're gonna need another piece of wire to do that. So I'm gonna cut another piece of my 22 gauge wire. Okay, uh, about, I don't know, four inches. I cut way more than four inches, but okay. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take all my strands I'm going to take my wire, remember, and just crisscross it over all of those strands because we're going to do a little, a little loop here. You can fold your, your strands over to hold on to it a little bit better. Just treat your wire wrap like a briolette, one of them up straight up and down and one of them used to wrap around the other. Now, remember, all of this goes inside the cone, so you're not going to see any of it. It doesn't matter if it's messy or not, okay? And now, kind of just everything before we tie. I'm evenly space everything out. Okay, now I'm going to tie the knot, right? So I'm taking all these ends all together, tying the knot. over kind of what we just did. Pull all of it tight. Gotta get your knot as tight as possible. Now to do that, you're gonna have to pull the individual strands, okay? It's gonna help to cinch your knot down. Can double pull, doesn't hurt anything, all right? Just making sure we get a nice good knot. Okay, so I've got a really tight, tight, tight knot here. And again, I'm going to come in just like where we started. I'm going to trim all of this off. Pretty short. May even need to cut it even shorter than that. Okay. And hypo cement. Hypo cement is going to be your best friend here. Okay. Put that in. And around your knot, that end where you trimmed off those ends, I just want the extra security of a little glue here, okay? And then we're going to pull all that into our cone, right? So we're going to hope it all fits in there nice and, nice and neat. Where's our cone? <laughs> I lost my cone. Okay, pull all that in just like so. Now all of that's hidden. Hooray. It worked out. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that worked out. All right. And we're going to do a wrapped loop here. So grabbing the wire, I'm going to give it a bend over the top of the pliers. Okay. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. We're going up and over, rotate the pliers. So you can take the wire over to the other side. That's going to help you close up that loop. And then you want to wire wrap in the space between your loop and the top of your cone. And just to keep things a little bit more balanced, I'm going to take the wire and go back up over the wraps that I already made. That's just going to kind of make my wire wrap section a little bit more chunky. And it's just a little bit more even with the top of that cone. Okay. And I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay. Now take a look at what we've got. Now I know we've been working on this for a while now. But we have this beautiful cluster of three strands. Look at how fun that is, right? That's going to hang and be just something really magical, I'm telling you. They're all kind of tiered out. But if you wanted to, you could twist them, right? And then attach them all twisted. That's called a torsade. Tors tors I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody out there knows. Um, but yeah, so you can twist them all together if you want to. Or you can just leave them like this. Now, somebody mentioned, are we making a necklace or a bracelet? But you know what? It's originally, it's going to be a necklace, but dang, what a bracelet that would be, right? So if you wanted to make this a bracelet, you absolutely could. 
but we want to make it a full necklace. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some bead stringing wire and we're just going to string up some length here. Now, I don't really know for sure what the length should be. And actually, I don't even know if we should do bead stringing wire because of the mention of the suede. Maybe we should just do suede. How do you guys feel about that? Because look at what I can do. This is one of my favorite things to do with necklace. The toggles that were included, I can, I know I wish I had wire wrapped those directly, but I can wire wrap to these, whoops, and then loop, let's do that. Because I don't want to keep you here forever. <laughs> but we're going to use some faux suede lace in this kind of like coffee brown. Let's do that. So I apologize for telling you we're going to use bead stringing wire. However, if you wanted to use bead stringing wire, the 19 strand of gold color is what I would have used and it would have looked amazing. Um, but let's, let's go with this and call it a day with our necklace. So let me grab some jump rings here. Let's see. Where are my little baby jump rings? Suede and toggles. I, I love a, I love, love, love a suede length on a necklace it's so comfortable to wear and it's lightweight you know <laughs> prudence says i'm not working i have all day <laughs> all right so i'm gonna loop on a jump ring and then i'm gonna thread that to the loop part of the toggle okay that little ring now had i had enough forethought i would have wire wrapped these together and not used a jump ring but this is where we are. Jump rings will work. They come in handy for that kind of thing. But I would have wire wrapped them directly together if I'd known that's the choice I was going to make just for the extra insurance, right? But there's nothing wrong with the, these beads are not super heavy, so I'm not, I'm not really concerned. Okay, now let's take our suede and I like to take a long piece of suede. Now, remember, I'm doing design on the fly, so I don't really know for sure how much the measurement here is. Um, but I can tell you, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to cut some of it off. <laughs> so I'm going to say this was about 12 inches, 24 inches. Okay, 24 inches of faux suede lace folded in half. And we're going to do a lark's head knot. Let's see, I never can remember which direction I want to go. Okay, so the loop goes through the toggle loop and then take your two ends through and pull. Okay, now you can do a barrel knot here if you want to. You can do an overhanded knot here. You don't have to do the lark's head. I just like it. <laughs> I'm just a fan. I use it a lot. You guys know. You can do whatever kind of knot you want to to attach your, um, your cord. I do want to come to the back of that Lark's head knot and I'm going to put a little bit of this into that knot just on the back though. That's going to keep your Lark's head knot from slipping open. Okay. So I just kind of, you can see, and it'll dry clear. So you'll never see that. That is the back though. So it won't matter too much, but um, for anybody who is curious, all right. So again, another piece, take the two ends together. Okay. Fold them in half, make a loop, put the loop through the toggle, take your ends through. Now I don't have any cord ends for this on hand. So we are going to have to just fake it until I get done. Like after I leave, I'll put the cord ends on this. Um, but I would at this point, okay, take my two pieces or my two sections, bring them together. Okay. Trim the ends to make sure that they're all the same length. You can see a couple of them are a little long. We're just going to trim all of them right off so they're all the same length. Okay, take them back into two because one's one strand. 
and or one's one side and one's the other side. And I would use a cord end on this. I like the fold over cord ends. I don't know if I have any in gold. I'm going to have to look for that brass color. Um, and since I didn't plan ahead for this, I don't have any of that to do that at the moment. But I'm going to put cord ends on this. Okay. And then from the cord ends, I'm just going to put some jump rings and a clasp and that's it. I'm going to keep it nice and easy. Um, in fact, I may use, I still have another toggle left from the, um, the bead box. I'll probably put the toggle on this. Okay. So I apologize for not having the cord ends. I didn't know that's how we were going to do this, but I can still show you what this is going to look like on the bust. So I'm going to turn you around and we're going to look at it and then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. We ran over today about 17 minutes. So for those of you who have stuck around, looks like we've still got a really big crowd. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you hanging around today. Put this on the bus to show you what it's going to look like. Now, I may add more things to this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do to it yet, but it does look beautiful just like it is. Definitely just needs some cord ends. I'm just going to tie it onto the bust for now so I don't have to hold on to it so much. Um, but this will look good with, whoops, this will look good with um, chain if you don't want to do the faux suede lace. Round cord is going to be beautiful with this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, please. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful. <laughs> Like, I'm shocked because when we design on the fly, I never really know what's going to happen. And I never really know if, like, what I think in my head is going to actually come out of my fingers, right? I don't ever know for sure if it's going to be pretty enough or not. And I got to say, this turned out really, really well. Turned out more beautiful than I expected it to, even with that one singular cord that's missing. Like, you don't even notice it. You don't, it doesn't even make any difference. It's so full and and colorful and full of texture. There is little pops of sparkle in between there. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I did a good job today. <laughs> I did a good job today, y'all. <laughs> I hope you guys like it. I'm going to finish the ends of this and I'll probably put it in the shop. And here's the cool thing, right? I've got enough beads left over okay, that I can make another one of these if I wanted to. I can make a matching bracelet. I can make a stack of bracelets. I still have all of those metal pieces, so I can make earrings to go with it. I can add little metal dangles and fun things to this if I wanted to, you know. The sky is the limit, and for less than 20 bucks, I've got enough to make like a whole collection with this color palette. So that's why I say bargain bead box. I know a lot of you out there don't like to get beads before you see them, but for the value alone, it's worth it. It's worth it, at least in my opinion. So if you sign up for the bargain bead box, you have my seal of approval. And if you're disappointed, you can come and, um, you know, you can be mad at me about it. Okay. <laughs> So there you go. Were the bead caps from Bargain Bead Box? They were not. I actually pulled those out ahead of time from my stash, but any like tassel topper or cone or large, um, large necklace end cord end is going to do just fine. You just want to be sure that you've got something that has a big enough opening to hide our knot. Remember, we've got nine strands of Belon that's knotted together. So I needed to be sure that I had something that had a big enough opening to hold that big bulky knot. So yeah. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. It has been so much fun. It's always fun. I like to design on the fly. It makes me really nervous, but when it turns out good, it's just like, okay, I'm going to have a good day today. <laughs> So I hope that I have inspired all of you. I hope that um, you're looking at this color palette. Some of you out there are like, this is not my color palette. I hope I've inspired you to use it because remember, just because it's not your color palette doesn't mean that there's not a customer out there that is going to absolutely fall in love with this color palette. So always keep that in mind, depending on what you do with your jewelry, right? All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the afternoon, you guys. I've got a Michaels class tomorrow. Don't forget, you can sign up for those. They are absolutely free. We're making some really cool earrings tomorrow. They're pretty easy. I'm going to have them right here. I love earrings. They're always super fun. We're doing some wire wrapped earrings for our Michaels class tomorrow, but uh, you can make these smaller. I hear people out there, that's a big earring. You can make them smaller, right? You don't have to make big and huge earrings, but they're super fun. They're going to be great for New Year's. So 
looking forward to that. Hope to see some of you there tomorrow. Okay. In the meantime, in the meantime, if I do not see you, I will see my hardwired group at 4 30 PM this afternoon. I'm going to go put some food in my face, set up for that. And I'll see you guys really, really soon. The rest of you guys, I will see you on Friday for our feel good Friday show, right? Enjoy the rest of your week, you guys. Bye.